So it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Ning Ning Xue. So Ning Ning, if you could uh, see, yeah, you can, I guess, try to also uh, share your screen. So Ning Ning is uh, currently a research associate at uh, Cambridge, and she received her PhD from uh, from University of Hong Kong, uh, maybe a year or two ago. She works in programming languages and with a particular focus on functional programming and type theory. It's quite impressive. Her work has won two ACM Sigplan Distinguished Paper was one at Popo, one at PLDI, and also her work has been incorporated into COCA. So this uh, strongly typed functional language with effects that's, I guess, from Microsoft Research. And she was also selected a rising star um, in 2020. So Ning Ning, thanks for speaking at the workshop. We look forward to your talk. So thanks for a very nice introduction. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Ning Ning again. So uh, today I'm going to talk about efficient compilation of algebraic effect handlers. So we start by a small task. Can you implement a function which takes an integer i and returns the result of 42 divided by i? Well, you are wondering what's special about this task? We can define the function b42 straightforwardly. This function takes an integer i and returns 42 divided by i. But wait a second, this is not quite right. What would happen if i is zero? Okay, let's branch on whether i is zero. If it is, we raise an error, otherwise we return 42 divided by i. But fixing the denominator to 42 is a bit too specific. Let's generalize this function to div n that asks the user to input a number n. And furthermore, if i is not zero, we want to write it to the log that the function code is successful before we return the result. And maybe we also want to uh, record the number of successful function calls using some state for variable count. Of course, this little example is artificial, but it represents a typical pattern of real programs which have set effects including exceptions, user input, logging, statement management, etc. Desirably, we would want a mechanism that can model those computational effects in a unified and easy to compose manner. Now consider our second task. We want to model a calculator. Here we consider three different calculators, the iOS calculator, the Google calculator, and the calculator defined in a total programming language. In this case, we consider the COG programming language, which is a proof assistant. So being total is important for the proofs to be valid. Interestingly, these three calculators deal with exceptions differently. Given the input zero divided by zero, both iOS calculator and the Google calculator return error. As cog is total, it does not create exceptions and returns a default value zero. Given other input one divided by zero, the iOS calculator still returns error, while the Google calculator returns infinity and the cog still returns the default value zero. If we further add one to this expression, the LS calculator and the Google calculator will stay the same, but cock will return one because the exception part returns zero and we continue with one plus zero resulting in one. This example shows us that for the same set effect, the behavior of programs may vary differently. And how can we model those different behaviors without manually copying and pasting the definition of the calculator to just change how exceptions are handled? So the questions we ask here are how to compose computational effects and how to handle effects according to different applications. Algebraic effects are a unifying language abstraction that is able to express composable and modular computational effects. By having effects which define a family of operations separately from handlers, which give semantics to operations. Algebraic effects were introduced by Plotkin and Power in 2003, and algebraic effect handlers were introduced by Plotkin and Pretina in 2009. In this work, they established the categorical semantics of algebraic effects and handlers. And since then, algebraic effects have been intensively studied. 
There are many language implementations of algebraic effects, like F with first class effects and handlers, COCA, a functional oriented language with effect inference, Lynx, a web programming language, and Frank, which has a direct style programming which models handling by applications, and the effect language with lexically scoped handlers and a lightweight effect polymorphism. Algebraic effects go into industrial length languages too. This year, Mochiko Okamo has announced that effect handlers will be in Okamo 5.0 to support direct style concurrency through effect handlers. And the web assembly community group is also planning to support effect handlers as one of the mechanisms for supporting concurrency and asynchronous IO. There are also growing industrial interests in algebraic effects. For example, React, a JavaScript library for building user interfaces by Facebook, uses ideas from algebraic effects to design hooks that allow developers to reuse stateful logic. And Pyro, a deep universal probabilistic programming language by Uber, has a library for composable effect handlers for creating new inference algorithms for probabilistic programming. So if you can take one sentence home from this talk, take this one, algebraic effect handlers go mainstream. The rest of this talk has four parts. We will first go through algebraic effects 101, and then I will demonstrate many common examples defined using algebraic effects. We then discuss efficient compilation of algebraic effects. And finally, I will show how algebraic, how algebraic effects are in, compiled efficiently using evidence pattern semantics as implemented in the COCA programming language. So far, I haven't really told you what algebraic effects are. And the easiest way to understand a concept is always to take an example. Here is an example for what we call a reader effect. There are three parts. In the first part, we define an effect read, which has a single operation ask that given a unit returns the integer. The second part defines the handler for read. Here, x stands for the operation argument. In this case, it is always a unit, and k stands for the resumption. The implementation says that if a program calls ask, it will resume the resumption k with the result value one. Handlers take a computation, which is represented as a unit taking function. In this computation, we simply call ask twice. Since each ask returns one, we will get a two as our final result. In this example, we resume the resumption exactly once. And let's see another example where we never resume as in exceptions. We define the exception effect, which has a single operation throw, which takes a unit and is polymorphic over its return type. So we can perform throw in any typing context. With the exception effect, we can define, for example, the division function with, it, with exceptions. Here, if n is zero, we will perform throw, or otherwise we will divide m by n. Now we can use div in a maybe context. So if the computation does not throw, as in this first example, we will just return just the 21. Otherwise, as in the second example, we perform uh, this div 42 zero will perform a throw. So we will ignore this resumption and return nothing. So the whole computation will return nothing. In practice, always wrapping the computation inside this just is annoying. Also, while in this case, the result is maybe, different handlers may want to return different results. Therefore, effect handlers also provide a return clause, which applies if the computation returns a value. Now we can directly call div, and this return will wrap the result inside a just if the computation returns normally. And if we want to return a list, we just change the definition of the handler. For example, this handler says that if the computation performs a throw, the handler returns an empty list. And when the computation succeeds, it wraps the return result inside a single list. So let's summarize the essence of algebraic effects. To do so, let's first define some notations. 
In the rest of this talk, we will explicitly and also informally talk about evaluation context or code stacks. For example, given this expression, we can represent it as this. Here, the code stacks grow top down. So we have a 20, which will be added by one and then multiplied by two. As this function gets evaluated, we have 21 multiplied by two and then we got 42. Okay, using this informal notion of code stacks, let's now summarize the essence of effect handlers. Essentially, when handling a computation under a handler, which has a return clause and an operation clause, there are two possible situations. Namely, every computation either calls an operation or returns a value. In the first case, the computation evaluates to a value, um, in this case, V, and we will discard the handler frame and apply the return clause to the value with X substituted by V. The second case captures where an operation is handled. In this case, perform op V uh, calls an operation op and provide the operation argument V. This operation may happen deep in the code stack. Then the handle frame will handle this operation by applying the operation clause where X is substituted by the operation argument V and the resumption K captures the original handle as well as the whole code stack between handler and the operation code. Let's use our exception effect as a concrete example. If we do div 42 by two, then the computation returns a value. So we will go into the first, the first case. Dividing 42 by two returns 21. Now we apply the return clause re replacing X by 21 and we get just the 21. Now we do div 42 by zero. We know that in this case, the definition of div will cause an operation. So we enter into the second case and we do perform zero unit. We apply the zero clause, which is nothing. Although k captures the resumption, it is not used in this case. So we will just get, get nothing uh, as a result of this program. Now, suppose instead of nothing, the third clause actually applies k to zero. Then we will have k zero here, where k is the resumption. So we will continue the evaluation with k zero on top of the evaluation stack. With this understanding of algebraic effects, let's go back to the calculator example. Using algebraic effects, we can define the div function as this. We first define an effect div by zero, which has a single operation div by zero. And this div by zero effect is essentially just a variant of the exception effect. Except in this case, the effect takes an integer argument and returns an integer. In the definition of div, when the second argument is zero, we will perform this operation div by zero and pass the first argument m. Now, the specific application will give semantics to div by zero. In the case of the iOS calculator, we handle div by zero by always return error. And in the case of the Google calculator, we case analysis the argument of div by zero. If it is zero, we will return error, or otherwise we will return infinity. For calc, we always resume with the default value zero. So note how using algebraic effects, we can define three different applications with the same underlying logic, this div function, but we just with different uh, handlers for the exception. We have seen the effects of reader and exception. Now let's see some more examples of common effect handlers. And many practical uses of effect handlers are just the variants of the common ones. First, algebraic effects can also encode stateful values. Here, we define a state effect polymorphic over the state type A. In this case, state defines two operations, get and set. Get gets the value of the state and sets updates it. 
Generally, an effect tank can have as many operations as you want. We can define a state handler using the monadic encoding, where performing an operation returns a function that takes in the current state. So the resumption k is always applied to two arguments, where the first is the operation result and the second is the new state. So when we get this, uh, get this value, the operation result and the state will remain y. And when we set the value, the operation result is unit and then the new state is x. When the computation returns a value, we ignore the state and the return value. And in this example, we provide the initial state zero. And we first set the state to 21 and get it, and then add the state to itself. So we will get 42 for this, for this program. While this is a nice example of the expressiveness of effect handlers, it is clearly not the most efficient way to express multiple, uh, multiple states. In practice, state can be implemented more efficiently using parameterized handlers or a primitive uh, state handler. When defining the handler, we have the resumption k available. With that, we can actually resume more than once. The choice effect defines an operation flip, which when given a unit returns a boolean. For example, we can perform flip, get x, and perform an other flip, get y, and get x and y. In the handle of choice, we implement non-determinism by collecting all possible results in a list by resuming the resumption k twice, each time with a different Boolean result. When the computation returns a value normally, the return clause wraps the computation result inside a singleton list. Now, think about what this computation will return. First, we resume with x being true and resume with y being true. So the first result is true, which will be put inside a singleton list and gets added to the rest of the result. Then while x is still in its true branch, y will become false. And so we get the second result, which is false. Then x turns into false and we have two results from y, from y true and y false respectively. But since x is false, the result is false. So the final result is a list of all possible choices we can get for x and y. And with a variant of choice, we can also implement probabilistic choice where we resume the resumption with different values according to a probabilistic uh, distribution. Algebraic effects are also composable. We have defined the choice and the exception effect. Now consider this program. We want to perform a flip, but there is possibilities that it can fail. So we first perform flip, and only if it is true, we perform an other flip as a result, or otherwise we perform a throw. We can handle this computation by composing the handlers we defined before. The handler for exception returns the result into a maybe. So if, if it fails, we return nothing. And the handler for choice collects all the results. And think about what this computation will return. First, when x is true, we will collect two results for the second flip, true and false respectively. Then, since the exception handler wraps the result into just, we will get a list of just true and just false. When x is false, we perform throw, and the exception handler turns it into a, into a nothing, which gets appended to the result list too. So we get a list of just true, just false, and nothing. We can also compose handlers in different ways by exchanging the order of the two handlers. So think about what this computation will return if we swap the order of handlers. In this case, even though the choice handler is still trying to collect all the results, the exception handler is in a higher level and where the throw is performed, the whole computation will return nothing. We can generalize the choice effect to the effect select, which when given a list of some A, 
returns one element from the list. We can also compose select with exception, but here the easiest way to model failure is to select from an empty list. Now we can choose three numbers, x, y, and z from one to 15. And if the square of x plus the square of y equals the square of z, we return them as a triple, as a triple or otherwise we call failed. The first handler we define, just like the previous choice handler, apply k to all possible choices and collect all the results. This is implemented by the function concat map. So if x is empty, it also just returns an empty list. Now we can get all triples of possible x, y, and z. Instead of returning all results, we can also just return the first result by implementing back checking in the handler. In this new handler definition, we first pattern match on the input list wise. If it is empty, then we return nothing. Otherwise, the list ys has y prime as the first element and ys prime as the tail. And we first apply k to y prime. If the result is nothing, then we continue by trying ys prime. Or otherwise, we just return the, the just v as the as result of this computation. This way, we can effectively return the first result of all possible choices. Select can be used to implement, for example, n queens. The programming pattern is exactly as before. Essentially, we place the queen by columns. So we iterate n times, and in each iteration, the function f takes all queens that we have placed so far. And therefore, the next column places a queen on every possible row by performing select from, n to, or to, from 1 to n. And if we can safely place this queen, then we add it to the current result, or otherwise we just co-failed. With previously defined handlers uh, for select, we can just collect all the results to n queen or return the first solution to n queens. The last example we consider is the cooperative multi-threading. Since the resumption k uh, are their first class values, we can just store them in a queue to implement cooperative, cooperative multi-threading. Here we define two effects, a queue and a coop. The queue effect is similar as the state effect, which operate over a stateful queue. Here we assume this in queue operation includes a function and the DQ operation returns the first function in the queue or returns an identity function if the queue is empty. The group has two effects, yield and fork. Now we can define a scheduler. Essentially, the idea is that this queue keeps all the resumptions. And when a computation yields, we will put the resumption into the queue and then execute the first one in this queue. And if the computation calls fork with some function g, then we will put the current resumption into the queue and then evaluate this uh, function g under the same scheduler. If the computation returns a result, then this, uh, this computation is done. So we can execute the next uh, uh, resumption in this queue if there is any left. This way, all resumptions get a chance to run when others have terminated. So now consider this example. What will this computation return? So we first print A, and then we perform a fork. Since we perform a fork, we will put the resumption starting from print C into this queue, and then we will evaluate this expression. So we will print B. And then we will perform another yield. So we will put this print E into the queue, and then we will evaluate the first resumption in the queue, which starts with this print C. So we will evaluate, C, uh, we will print C. C. And then we perform one more fork. So we will put the, the resumption, which is the rest of the computation print F into the queue. But remember here, we already have a print E in the queue. So print F is put next to the print E, uh, print F is put next to the print E. And then we evaluate this computation and we print C. And it yields again. So we put print G into the queue 
and then I evaluate the expression in the, uh, the first expression in the queue, which is print E. So we print E, and then E is finished. So we evaluate to the next computation. So we print F, and then finally we print G. Okay, now we summarize algebraic effects. We have seen algebraic effects can model composable and modular computational effects. And there are three key components in an algebraic effects program. Where the algebraic effects define a family of operations and effect handlers give semantics to operations and every computation either calls an operation or returns a value. We have seen examples including reader, exception, state, choice, select, and cooperative multi-threading, where the resumption can never be resumed or resumed exactly once or more than once. And all those examples can be expressed in a unified framework with algebraic effects and different effects and handlers can be easily composed. So it seems everything just works well until you want to compile algebraic effects efficiently. We demonstrated the challenge with this example. In this example, we have three handlers in the stack and we have an operation. So let's assume this handler is the right handler for this operation because this is, for example, an exception uh, effect and then we got different handlers in the stack like handler for exception, handler for state, handler for reader. And we assume this deep blue one is the right handler for this perform of. Now let's take a closer look at how this e expression evaluates. So to evaluate this operation, we need to find its, uh, its semantics in its handler. So we yield up to the evaluation context and hope to find a handler for it. So we go through all non-handler frames and find the first handler. Since we suppose uh, the deep blue one is the right handler, so this case is this innermost handler is not useful. So we keep go uh, going up and find another handler, which is again not useful. And we finally reach uh, the right handler. And now we apply the operation where resumption K captures the evaluation context before this handler up to the perform site. So the challenges are that this evaluation includes two potentially expensive runtime operations. First, since the perform can be deeply inside the evaluation context and we need to find the right handler for it, that, mean, that means we need to perform a linear search through the current evaluation context. Second, after finding the handler clause F, we need to provide the resumption K. So that means we will need to capture the evaluation context up to the find handler and create a resumption function. This is not only expensive, but might be impossible for some platforms like .NET, where you have no access to stacks. So the question is, can we address those challenges and compare algebraic effects efficiently? There has been lots of work on compiling algebraic effects using different methodologies. Here, we briefly summarize some of the methodologies. First, Lynx uses a CPS-based translation of effect handlers. However, CPS introduces closure allocation cost. Although Hingler-Strom has shown that we can partially evaluate uh, administrative terms at translation time. Lehan showed that with a type and effect system, we can selectively perform CPS translation for only effectful programs. And iterated CPS is also used in the effect programming language combined with capability passing style. However, CPS alone is often insufficient to achieve the best performance result. Multical or camel uses seg uh, segmented stacks, so a one-shot resumption can be implemented efficiently. We demonstrated this approach uh, using an example. With the segmented stacks, the code stack is essentially a list of what they call fibers, where a fiber includes the ha a handler and a list of frames. So the blue, uh, so the black frames are all non-handler frames. Therefore. When the computation calls an operation, instead of checking every frame, we just need to check the handlers associated with each fiber. So it is now a linear search in terms of the number of fibers in, instead of frames. 
Multiple Ocano at this moment does not come with an effect type system, so it is possible that an operation is not handled. In this case, it will just return a re raise an unhandled error. Now suppose the operation is actually handled by the handler in the middle. Then we will evaluate the operation clause at the previous fiber. Uh, with the resumption k directly pointing to the handler frame. Multiple Ocamo only supports one-shot resumptions. That means you can only resume at most once. So suppose the operation is to resume with zero and then add the result to one. Then we will leave this one plus frame in the fiber and then link the fiber back with the handler fiber and attach zero uh, at, at the head of this stack. So this way, multiple Ocamo efficiently implement one-shot resumption. However, multiple Ocamo does not have direct support for multi-shot resumptions like the choice effect we have seen before, where the handler can resume uh, uh, the resumption multiple times with different values. To do that, in Ocamo, we will need to manually copy the resumption, which is slow and also subtle, as the optimizer may not be aware of the multiple resumptions and may generate invalid code when optimizing across function calls. Then, capability passing style has been under active development for the effect language. It tries to interpret the effect type differently. Specifically, instead of a computation might perform some effect, it reads an effect type as the computation requires the calling context to handle an effect. So let's see an example. This is our old example with the exception. Normally, we would interpret this code as this div function might perform the effect uh, except. Instead, the effect language interpret it as the function requires a capability to perform effect. Therefore, it translates the function into a function that explicitly takes a handler for throw as an input. So when the computation performs the throw, it performs specifically with this uh, input handler argument. Now, when we define a handler, this handler implementation is represented as a block and then it is passed to this div as an extra argument. This way, this language implements lexically scoped handlers, and by making the flow of capabilities explicit, an optimizing compiler can specialize programs to non-effect handler implementations and thus achieve efficient implementation for lexically scoped handlers. However, this only applies to lexically scoped handlers. To understand what are lexically scoped handlers, Consider this example. In this case, we have a perform of V, uh, which is at the head of the stack. And let's assume the handler for this operation is this one. Then with the next class of the handlers, this handler will, will be passed to the function as the handler for this operation. However, since this operation is wrapped inside the lambda, we don't yet evaluate it. Then suppose later during evaluation, we return this function as a value and unwind the code stack. And then we call this function under a different handler for it. Now, according to the dynamic semantics of algebraic effects, this new origin handler will handle this perform. This also shows the expressiveness of algebraic effects where we can dynamically install handlers. However, in lexically scoped handlers, the perform is already attached to the original deep blue one. Now it is problematic as the deep blue one is not in this evaluation context anymore. So there is no resumption we can capture. So with lexically scoped handlers, we needed to reject this program. For example, as of the UFSA 2020 paper, the effect language does not support first class function to prevent this problem. Therefore, capability passing style supports efficient but lexically scoped handlers. In this year's Uppsala, the F language proposed a set of rewriting rules, which are expressed as source to source transformations. Those rewriting rules perform aggressive compile time reduction in, uh, in the program, which also restructures the program in a supposedly semantics preserving way to explore more opportunity for compile time reduction. 
So in some sense, these rewriting rules can be considered as a separate phase in the compiler, and it can be composed with other optimizing techniques. In the rest of this talk, we focused on algebraic effects in the COCA programming language with its implementation using evidence passing semantics. With evidence passing, we support multiple assumptions as well as original dynamic semantics of algebraic effects in an efficient way. First, I will give a little bit of introduction to COCA, a bit of his history. So Dan studied COCA in his very initial paper about programming with raw polymorphic effect types in MSFT 2014. This work shows that effects can be treated in a disciplined way using raw polymorphism. So when we see the effect, of pro so we can see the effect a program can perform in its type signature. And we get some static guarantees. For example, if a program does not declare that it has the effect reader, then it, will, it won't perform ASK. And this is something that Motico or Camel does not provide at this, at this moment. And at that point, the community is also actively investigating how algebraic effects can be implemented more, more efficiently. So later, the paper at Popo 2014 shows that we can compare effect handlers with type-directed selective CPS translation to JavaScript. But the performance is not good enough, and also we are not so happy with JavaScript. So at the same time, one of the exploration is to do algebraic effects directly in C, but that's quite complicated and requires some magic primitives that captures the code stack. So we started to wonder, is there any way we can implement algebraic effects more straightforwardly and it is easy to maintain and easy to reason? And we get into evidence passing of effect handlers where we show that using evidence passing semantics, we can go from algebraic effects into polymorphic lambda calculators and also have the idea implemented at the Haskell library. With the idea of evidence passing, we are now able to compile full algebraic effects into standard C code efficiently. And together with our work on Perseus, garbage free reference counting with reuse, we are able to get amazing performance results from COCA without needing any special runtime support. We are still actively developing COCA. So for example, we gave a talk at Hope this year to support first class handler names. So in the rest of the talk, we discuss in more detail what evidence passing semantics is. Essentially, Evidence pattern semantics presents a formalized evaluation semantics from algebraic effects into a polymorphic lambda calculus. And we show how this technique can be used to generate efficient C code with no special runtime support. We achieve our goal using a sequence of refinements to the semantics of algebraic effects through multi-prompt limited control, evidence pattern semantics, bubbling yields, and monadic translation. And we prove every translation in semantics preserving. And along the way, we also explore various interesting points in the design space. So all the techniques are implemented in the COCA programming language, which compares to standard C code without needing any special runtime support, uh, not even garbage effect collector, again, thanks to the precious reference counting techniques. We show that our approach is effective by benchmarking COCA against other implementations of effect handlers. Now we demonstrate its transformation. To do so, let's first recall the challenges of implementing algebraic effects efficiently. As we described it before, the main two challenges in this work is how to search through the evaluation context efficiently and how to capture the resumption efficiently. Now let's go through each transformation of evidence passing semantics and see how we can resolve those challenges. To pave the way, we first apply multi-prompt semantics here, suppose the first handler is this handler for this operation. And with multi-prompt semantics, each handler is replaced by a prompt. Importantly, each prompt is associated with a fresh unique marker, in this case, M1, M2, and M3. Now, when we perform the operation, we can search through the context and evaluate perform to yield, to yield M1, as we know exactly which prompt we should yield to, in this case, M1. Now, prompt will handle yield, where we will capture the resumption and evaluate it to the same expression as before, except we have replaced the handlers with prompt. 
At first sight, going through multi-prompt semantics does not seem to buy us much because the overall process is still the same. We do the search and we do the capturing. However, now we have separated the searching from capturing. So this open so by doing so, it opens up the way for optimizing each part individually, which we will do with evidence passing and bubbling. First, we avoid searching using evidence passing semantics, where instead of searching for a handler in the evaluation context, we will push down the current handlers as an evidence vector. Evaluation always starts with an empty evidence vector, but after handler, handler evaluates to prompt, it inserts itself into the evidence vector for the rest of the computation. So now we have evidence for this effect, the F1, and it records the marker M1 and the handle implementation H1. Similarly, the evidence vector keeps growing with more prompts. Now at this point, this yield M1 can directly take the current evidence vector, look up the evidence for the effect F1, which gives us M1 and H1, and then we can directly generate yield M1. So this is the essence of evidence passing. Importantly, such a lookup can even be implemented efficiently in constant time. In particular, if the system is equipped with effect types, as in the case of COCA, then the effect type will correspond exactly to the runtime shape of the evidence vector. And if we know the effect type at type at compile time, we can statically determine the index of a handle. Here, the significant difference between evidence passing and the capability passing, as we described it before, is evidence passing may change evidence vector dynamically, while capability passing turns handlers into capabilities during translation and is thus restricted to lexically scoped handler. By dynamically maintaining the evidence vector, we are able to model the original dynamic semantics of algebraic effects. We can also we can even do more. It turns out with evidence passing. We can often avoid yields by evaluating tail resumptive operations in place. Tail resumptive operations are of this form, where the resumption is directly resumed with an exception with an expression e. A reader, and in the case of exception, resume with the, the resumption uh, with a default value are of this form. So, in fact, many common operations used in, pra in practice are tail resumptive. And for those operations, once we yield up, we will immediately resume with the result of evaluating E. But that's not necessary. We can directly evaluate E in place. In this case, since we get H1 from the evidence vector, we can replace this yield M1 with the tail resumptive body, in this case, E. So we will be able to evaluate the whole expression without even doing any yields. One subtlety of this optimization is that we will need an underframe to adjust the evidence uh, vector to preserve semantic correctness. We are going to skip the details, but this underframe is the key that we can perform tail resumptive operation while preserving the dynamic semantics of algebraic effects. However, not all operations are tail resumptive. Then we will get back to yield, and yield is still a non local and expensive operation. We use bubbling to make yields local by bubbling the yield up until it meets its corresponding prompt frame. So instead of capturing the multiple frames at the same time, with bubbling, we are going to build up the continuation in little parts. So when we are yielding, we will uh, keep the currently built up resumption as an extra argument to yield, starting with, um, starting with empty. So we extend it with each frame one at a time until we meet the prompt where resumption is now complete. To summarize, with evidence passing semantics, we have made perform local as we transform it into yield by, by inspecting the evidence vector. And with bubbling, we have made yield local by bubbling up the resumption piece by piece. Since everything is local, it opens up a way to implement everything in a monad. So with monadic translation, our old example with reader will be translated into a monadic expression like this. I think we are running out of time, so I will go quickly about this translation, but I only have a three or four slides left. So the monad we are using is also regular. It is essentially a reader monad for a current evidence vector and composed with a control monad. So the definition of control 
uh, it can be understood via this definition of the monadic binding. So in this case, if a competition returns pure, then we will just pass the results to the current, uh, pass the result to the, uh, the other competition G, or otherwise if it is yield, then we will uh, push G into the partially built up assumption. So essentially we are performing doubling. And at this point, we can use, since we made everything local and we have a monadic implementation, and at this point, we can use regular combination techniques to compare the algebraic effects to any target platforms. And in this case, we show like how COCA compiles to the standard C. So in this standard C code, we can, you can also see all ingredients I have just said in the generated code, like the evidence passing and the constant time uh, lookup. And then uh, we use a control monad to see whether the competition is yielding or not, because in most cases, uh, the competition is not yielding either, either because it is pure or it is pure receptive operation. And then if it's, it does yield, then we will build the partially, uh, we will partially build up the resumption by doubling. And most importantly, if the, fun the competition does not yield or it is a pure resumptive operation, then we will just uh, perform, we will take this happy task. So there is no allocation or no yielding. So we just perform to ask with constant time lookup and the implementation. So in our SCP 2021 paper, we have also shown that the old translations are actually semantics preserving, but now we are, go uh, we are going to skip the details for so the interested reader, please uh, refer to our SCP 2021 paper. And all the techniques I have just described, they are all implemented in the COCA programming language. And in the paper, we have also compared the performance with uh, between COCA and the many other implementations of algebraic effects, like in multiple OCaml or as libraries in other uh, languages. So you can see like, uh, because COCA supports pure resumptive optimization. So when we have like nested effects, the, the performance of COCA stays uh, almost the same while the performance for multiple OCaml, for example, uh, will grow linearly, um, right. So uh, finally, takeaways. So in this talk, we first ask the question, how to compose computational effects and how to handle effects according to applications. And our answer is algebraic effects. And we have seen many examples like reader choice uh, defined using algebraic effects. Then we asked, how can we implement algebraic effects efficiently? And then we had a brief overview of existing methodologies. Uh, finally, we showed that the evidence passing semantics supports multiple resumptions as well as the dynamic semantics of algebraic effects and it can be used to compare algebraic effects efficiently into C code. And uh, once again, if you can take only one sentence home from this talk, please take this one. Algebraic effect handlers go mainstream. So that's all I want to say and thank you for your attention and happy to take questions. Okay, thanks, Ni, for the nice talk. Uh, let's uh, take a, a couple questions from the audience. Any questions? So maybe let me start with one. Uh, uh, so Ni, why did you focus on choose C as the target that you compile to? That seems to be, uh, so what are the rationales behind that? Right, um, the, the major motivation is we really want to have a uh, great performance for the generated code. And then we choose C, so because it is performant and we also implemented algebraic, uh, we also implemented reference counting. So we don't need like a special runtime support like a garbage collector. Mm -hmm. So the C is uh, to us is like the perfect target language, but we are actually also actively working on compile COCA to a web assembly a target, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah, because with our techniques, we can just tag, we can just target any platform without any special runtime support. Okay, I see. Yeah, so I see Peter has a question. Yeah, thanks for a nice talk. So just a very short question. You said at the beginning the takeaway message is that uh, effect handlers are becoming mainstream. So one of the best known uh, mainstream languages that has an effect system is uh, Java with checked exceptions. But as far as I know, I mean, that feature is not popular at all, neither with the programmers nor with the language designers of the language. Um, and people are trying to get around it with unchecked exceptions. C Sharp, which started out I mean, extremely similarly to Java, decided to drop the system. So what makes you so optimistic about effect handlers in the future? I mean, what, what did Java do wrong or, or how can one improve on the situation to make them actually mainstream? Right. Um, 
I think for me, I'm uh, optimistic about algebraic facts go mainstream because uh, as I showed like more and more languages and libraries, libraries are supporting algebraic effects. And to me, algebraic effects are really, really a very nice and unified way to support like many different computational effects in a unified fr a framework uh, like state and concurrency. But I can also see uh, maybe algebraic effects themselves, like uh, when I learned algebraic effects uh, at from the beginning, I also feel it's, it's not a very easy topic to pick up. So because you need to think about things like very abstractly. And I think uh, like even when I say like the Facebook has the library react and they got a article to introduce algebraic effects, I can also see like uh, programmers could get confused about these concepts. So because they are so used to the existing techniques to implement all the computational effects. So I think there should be like um, more like beginner friendly uh, way to introduce algebraic effects. And then we can like uh, gradually add more and more support to algebraic uh, to support of algebraic effects into like other languages and libraries. And the other thing I'm I'm very excited about is web assembly. They are taking algebraic effects seriously. They are actively designing algebraic effects uh, in web assembly. Although you know there are some distance between having an idea to having a design to having an uh, in, uh, implementation, but I think they are. Uh, taking this path, and uh, then uh, I think in the near future we might see algebraic effects implemented in WebAssembly. So to me, that is like a web programming language that is like a mainstream language. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Nini. Yeah, so let's uh, because time is short. Let's hear from the next speaker. Yeah, thanks for the nice talk again. Yeah, thank you. And if anybody has any follow up questions, yeah, please get in touch.